Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am Rob with RV Living Yet, and today we're going to wire a 50 amp RV plug to the side of this barn so that we can hook up when we're stationed here. Um, I'll show you the steps that I'm going to take and why you should go with a 50 amp over a 30 amp even if you have a 30 amp RV. So stay tuned. So we picked up this 50 amp RV exterior plug and what we're going to do is mount it right here to the barn. Uh, that way when we're in town we can just plug right in and we have power. Uh, there's an electric panel right inside here so it's going to be pretty easy to come out. We're going to penetrate through the back of the box. I'm going to put a little nipple in and we'll have power when we need it. Okay, so now we're inside the barn and this is the sub panel that we have and then right out here is where I was showing you guys outside where we're going to mount the plug. I have a 2x4 here which is going to be great to mount it to so we're not just mounting it into sheet metal. And I'm going to come out of the panel and we're going to poke right through the wall and I'll show you step by step of how I do it. Again, this is not a how to because I don't want to be liable for you know anything you guys do but this is how we do it. Hopefully it will give you some good ideas and perhaps it's something you want to do at your home. So let's do it. Yeah, it's a step. Get rid of all the spider webs. Alright, I'm just taking the panel cover off. If you're not comfortable working with electric, I would definitely recommend hiring an electrician. But if you're a DIYer and you're familiar with electric a little bit, it's a pretty easy process. We're going to have a shockingly good time. I hope not. But <laughs> So this is the inside of the electric panel. Uh, we do have a couple open spaces, a couple of larger breakers that aren't being used. So for this process, I got some box connectors we'll go into in a minute. And we got some 6-3 wire. This is copper. So for the 50 amp circuit, you're going to need a 6 gauge. You're going to need three conductors. Fortunately, ours is a really short run, so I didn't have to buy too much of it. All right, so they already had a knockout busted out. I'm just going to get it a little bit larger to the larger size. If somebody didn't already go ahead and do this, you're going to want to pick one that's large enough to accommodate the wire connector for a 6 gauge. Okay, let's just pop out. <clears throat> All right, give yourself enough cable for each anywhere in the panel. I'm gonna tighten this down. Okay. Just lightly scoring, make sure you don't cut into your connectors, your conductors. And you should be able just to wrap that off. All right, with the 50 amp, you actually have two hot legs and like a 30 amp. Where the 30 amp RV plugs have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. This, we have two hot legs, so you have 120 and 120. You have your neutral and you have your ground, so that's why you have to get a 6-3 cable. So 50 amp is actually 100 amp, if you think about it, because you have 50 on each conductor. Substantial more power with a 50 amp RV than there is with a 30 amp. All right, so I'm going to come back and connect this after I've done the other side. You really don't want to connect this side while the other side is disconnected. So I just got it all prepped in, and we're going to mount the box and drill them through. Um, again, we're going to mount the box to the other side of this 2x4, and then just pop this cable right out into the back of the box. All right, so let's get into this 50 amp box. First thing I'm going to do is remove this screw right here. And this just slides out like so. If you can see the back of it, it's labeled right on these connectors. So you have your ground, which is your green. So your ground wire is going to go there. You have an X, you have a Y, and you have a white. So white is going to be your neutral. Your X, your Y are going to be your two hot legs. It's pretty straightforward. You're just going to connect all four of your cables to the back of this. Typically, there's knockouts in the bottom where you can put connectors and then come out if you have UF cable which is outdoor rated or if you're connecting a conduit this is probably the best place to connect 
There's also a weather head connection on top, so if you're coming in from the top, you can connect here. However, since I'm going right through the back, I'm just going to drill a hole through the back of the box, and I'm just going to put one of these nipples in to weather tight it, and I'm going to drill into the barn, and we're going to go right inside. So, um, you know, you can make it work. I'm going to use a step bit. Try not to drill through my tailgate. It's a little late now. I still got more to drill. Late? It, it's a little late after you get the shard in your eye. Oh, All right, so that's a bit improvised, but that should do. And that will get us right through into the wall. So let's come out the box. These glasses don't help from shards being on your head. Safety first. Or last. All right. So we'll get the hole drilled. And out the box. Put a couple self tappers in it. Okay. So they feed the wire out. All I got handy right now, I forgot to grab a staple, but I'm just gonna put this pipe strap on our cable here, keep it from moving. Should be all right, but ideally you want a better staple than that. So we're basically coming out of the box through our hole. I'll seal this all up with silicone, and let's go connect the outside. Uh, with a heavy gauge wire, sometimes the easiest way to cut it is with a saw, like that. All right, stripping the wires back. Close your ground. And you're just going to strip back. Not too much. Spoil the outside of the conductor. Spoil it long ways. And you can wrap it. Okay, like we mentioned before, green is ground. Let's hook that up first. And there's a ground lug right inside the box. Center one is your white. Make sure you're getting full copper contact and not pinching down on the insulation. Be sure to torque these pretty good. And then the last leg is over here. Seat it all the way in. Okay, so you had your factory ground, bind it to the box. You got a hot, you got a hot, and you got a white in the middle. So that's your wiring schematic for outside. And just neatly fold it all in there. I have a screw loose, yes. <laughs> Don't lose a screw. Uh, screw goes right back in here and just secures the cover. Okay, so that's more or less your outside connections. You can lock that if you wanted to, but we're done out here. We're gonna go inside and finish the connections and then seal the hole. All right, this is all the silicone I have with me right now, but I'm just gonna seal up this hole here. It's pretty much just gonna seal any water or critters out right there. Now you could certainly choose to you know run liquid tight all the way to your your box or you know come underneath the outside box and put some conduit in. I just figured this was a quick easy way for us to do it. We're not we don't need to get it inspected around here so that works for me. Uh, next step is we got our ground which is going to go on our ground bar. We have our neutral which is also going to go on the ground bar and then our two hots 
I'm going to go on a double, double throat breaker there. Okay, so we got our ground and our neutral <coughs> connected, and next we're going to run our hot legs. Size them up. Again, against this is enough if you're new to working with electric. You're probably best off shutting the whole breaker down, the whole panel. Um, just because all this stuff up here is energized. These wires are energized. So if there was a nick in this cable and you came across it, you could shock yourself. So best bet is either turn off the whole breaker here or maybe a disconnect outside. Okay, just making sure it's torqued down well. And a good connection here at the breaker. Neutral. Alright, and that is it for the panel itself. Next thing we got to do is just put the cover back on and test it all out. Okay, moment of truth. Psst. Just kidding. Alright, let's go test it outside. Alright guys, we always use a surge protector whether we're at our property or at a campground. We like the Progressive Industries. This is the 50 amp version. It's got some lights on it that let us know if the outlet is wired correctly or if there's any faults, you definitely don't want to plug into something that's going to cause your RV any issues. Uh, we'll leave a link for this stuff down below if you guys are interested, but we do recommend having some sort of surge protector. So before when we get to the campground, we just plug it in. It's plugged in. You guys can see that we got the green and blue lights, so we got a good circuit there. And we're going to plug in our RV. Drop the waterproof cover. Drop the cover on the, the outlet. And there we go. Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> uh, again, this is not a how-to video. This is not showing you guys we cannot be responsible for what you do with electric. Uh, if you're not comfortable with it, please hire an electrician. But this is just gives you an overview of pretty much how easy it is. So, and I also promise you guys why I would recommend putting a 50 amp RV plug even if you only have a 30 amp camper. The reason why I would put in a 50 amp versus a 30 amp even if I had a 30 amp RV is that if you go through all this process putting in a 30 amp plug and then in the future you upgrade to a 50 amp unit or you have a friend or family member that wants to stop by with an RV and they have 50 amps you have kind of shot yourself in the foot. What you could do is get a reverse dog bone like what we have here. Uh, this is actually a 50 amp to 30 amp since we have 50 but they make these where you could plug into a 50 amp plug and convert to a 30 amp. Uh, that way if you have a 30 amp camper you can still use this outlet no problem and if you upgrade in the future you don't have to go through this process again and like I said if you have friends or family stop by with an RV you have basically anything that you could ever, ever need there so that's why I would do it once, do it right, just get an adapter for your 30 amp RV and be done with it. So again guys I appreciate you guys watching this channel uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, give us a comment, let us know how we're doing. It really helps out the channel. Uh, if you're going to buy any of these products, use our links below. That definitely helps us as well. And we will see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.